Hello and welcome to another episode in my latest video series called Worth the Read. If this is your first video that you're watching from me, hi, I'm Monica and I currently make bookish content here on YouTube and the occasional book to TV adaptation video. If that sounds like something you're interested in, give me a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to see more videos from me. Very quickly, Worth the Read is about deciding if a book series or an author is worth your time and your investment into a book series or an author in particular. With that comes a little disclaimer. I am only one person, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. My own reading experience with an author or a book series will of course be different from yours, so that will be influencing my decision of whether a book series or author is worth the read. I am not the end-all be-all of deciding if an author or book series is great or not. I also do acknowledge that some certain book series or authors do have some controversies surrounding them and I am always learning about them and trying to be more conscious of that. I do welcome constructive and friendly discussions on whatever is being covered in the video, but do keep in mind that these videos are mainly for fun and I'm just making it so I could talk about books to someone. Okay, so introducing today's video topic and we're going to be talking about the author Emily Henry with her adult contemporary romance reads and my personal reading experience with her has been mainly positive. Her books are really easy to read through and it's really nice to pick up a romance read since I am mainly a fantasy reader. From the books I have read from Emily Henry, her th books really have one main theme, I would say. It's that they're mainly about couples who go on a trip or away from their daily lives and they fall in love on that trip. Her books are perfect for a summer read or if you just are in the mood for a romance read. And all the books that I'm going to be covering in today's video are her latest adult romance reads from the publication of Beach Read Forward. And overall, I do really look forward to reading more books from Emily Henry. Really quickly, how I'm going to be formatting this video. So first, I want to be talking about a really quick summary about the book. Second, I'm going to be listing some qualities or tropes that may interest you as a reader. Third, I'm going to be listing my own personal pros and cons about the book. And lastly, at the end of the video, I'll be deciding if this author is worth the read. First up, we have Beach Read here. And I think this is like one of the first books that a lot of people has read from her. And that's where she blew up in the romance book world. And it wasn't a book that disappointed me, which is really good. <laughs> so the summary, so we're following January Andrews, who has recently been reeling from the death of her father. And she's facing the worst writer's block in her life. Now she's spending her summer in an inherited beach house and trying to overcome her writer's block. However, the neighboring beach house beside January's is housing her college old rival, Augustus, and he's also an author. And what do you know, they're both facing writer's block and they decide to switch genres for the summer and learn about each other's genres. So January is a romance author while Gus is a literary fiction author. How may Beach Read interest you? First, there is the trope of past rivals to friends to lovers throughout the journey of the relationship of January and Gus. So you do see them reunite and see where things have left off from when they last saw each other in college. And that's like one of the things I really loved about Beach Read was the progression of the relationship that you get to witness. Second, this is a slow burn romance novel with underlying themes of dealing with grief and also overcoming doubts. So on to my personal positive thoughts on Beach Read. So Emily Henry does write the type of romance novel that balances really, really well of the serious topics such as grief ex explored in Beach Read and balancing that with the romance. So that was like one of the elements that I really enjoyed. You also do get some themes of love, learning about the truth, and loyalty. And the weekly meetings with January and Gus do lead up to a growth of their friendship, chemistry, and banter, which was really delightful to read. You get a very clear understanding of where both characters are in their lives in that moment. January had recently lost her father. She's also learning about her father's past mistress. She's inherited that unknown beach house that her father had owned, and her mother has also just previously recovered from cancer. And the only best thing going for January right now is her writing, but even that's falling apart. So going through her struggles and learning about her struggles was really 
interesting and engaging. On the other hand, Gus is more of a mystery to both us readers and January because we don't really learn more about him until around the halfway point of this book. His story is one about loneliness, heartbreak, and covering up his emotions, but there is a really sweet and happy ending for a couple, which I really, really love. So some cons to this book were, you can tell that this is a new genre for the author, and I did look up on her Goodreads, this is her first um, romance debut. The chapters got really long-winded and slow at times, but it's really made for a really good read. Another con to the story was that the cult side story overshadowed January's own story, so I wish there was less reminiscing on the past and focusing on the research storyline to just get to the romance. But overall, this was a really solid romance book, and Emily Henry really did impress me, and that's why I continue to pick up her new releases. And Beach Read does remain my favorite book from Emily Henry, and I really hope to reread it soon. Next up, we have People We Met on Vacation, and this one unfortunately did not have the same impact as Beach Read did for me. This one, we're following Poppy, who is a travel magazine blogger, and she is traveling the world on the company's dime. And Really, the only big thing that's missing from Poppy's life is her best friend Alex, who she has not spoken to in over two years, and they used to go on summer vacations together. And one day, on a whim, uh, Poppy shoots Alex a text in hopes of repairing their friendship and doing one last vacation together. There are many tropes I really did enjoy in this book, including friends to lovers, the slow burn romance, the one bed trope, and also the opposites attract trope were all in this book. I do think that the sunshine and grumpy trope is really, really prominent in this book, so if that is one of your favorites, I do highly recommend this one for you. What I did like about this book was that the relationship developed in a very nice way, but really organic in how Poppy and Alex are united with each other and how they reconnected in righting wrongs in the past. Poppy and Alex really do respect each other, they respect their boundaries, and they really grew close over their summer vacation. And they really do push each other out of their comfort zones, and by the end of the book, you do see that. They learn to get over their insecurities and understanding that there are many different ways to happiness and gathering the courage to actually confess their feelings to each other. But the cons for me in People We Meet Vacation were more extensive than the pros, unfortunately. First, I didn't like how the opposites attract trope was really in your face, and it didn't really add much to their banter or chemistry since it was just constantly in your face, and I was just expecting more from that, I think. Poppy, as the main character, is decent. She is a chatty, over-the-top, and really extroverted, really opposite as who I am personally, and Alex is more of a reserved, shy, and stay-at-home type. I think that's why I didn't really like Alex as a love interest because he reminded me so much of myself. I do think that Poppy did see ways to properly get Alex out of his comfort zone, to like meet more people, and to get more out of his shell. And the other con was that there were two different timelines. We're following present day Alex and Poppy on their current vacation, and we also get their past summer vacations, like going like 10 years back. With those flashbacks, all I wanted to do was to be on the vacation themselves and not really read more about Poppy and Alex. And I feel like the flashbacks did bring a lot of repetitive actions and plotline of the will they won't they and it was getting really boring for me at the midway point of this book. I do have to say that Poppy and Alex did respect each other's batteries because at one point in time they were both in committed relationships and they were just friends at that point so they did keep their distance when the other one was in a relationship. And that was like one of the biggest things for me that would have made me enjoy the book more would be a lot less of the running around each other and not confessing your feelings. I think that's one of the points that a lot of people do enjoy, but for me, it didn't really mesh well. Overall, People We Meet On Vacation is catered towards one specific trope being the sunshine grumpy trope or opposite the track trope. And I think that is something if you enjoy, I would really 
highly recommend this one. Okay, next we have Book Lovers, and this one we're following Nora Stevens, who is a literary agent, and she's reluctantly dragged to go on a sister's trip in a small town in North Carolina. Her sister Libby hopes that Noir will have that small town romance, but the only person Noir keeps on running into is Charlie, who is a book editor back in the city. What may interest you from book lovers, they really remind me a lot from Beach Read, including the rivals to lovers trope, the couple themselves working in the publishing industry, and high romantic tensions. The best things about book lovers were that it was set in a small town, you didn't really get that hallmark movie vibe, there was an actual user their jobs that sometimes we don't see in romance books but in book lovers we do see them make fun of literary tropes and on top of that we also got banter tension and a chemistry between the main couple and i really like our main character nora and she's not one to be easily swayed and you could describe her as high maintenance but she still remains really firm in who she is and i really like that about her what really turned me off about book lovers was that nora clearly saw that there was something wrong with her sister Libby, but despite several warning bells going off in her head, Nora just did not directly ask Libby what was going on in her life, and there was that miscommunication trope that I hate, but again, I, I understand why it's done in books and how that does relate to her life, because some people just don't say what they notice or they just keep it to themselves and like wave it off and that's what Nora did. Also it didn't help when Libby and Nora were in the small town, Libby would go out of her way to set up Nora on several dates with random guys in a small town. It was awkward to read those scenes because it was quite clear when we're reading from Nora's perspective that she is really into Charlie and she doesn't really care about these random dudes. But despite those cons, um, the main conflicts in this book were really well balanced between Nora's internal conflict with if she wanted to be with Charlie and then also with Nora's familial conflicts. Although Charlie isn't the most exciting love interest, but he's stable and that's really what Nora needs in her life at the moment. And I really did love their hate to love relationship programs. Book lovers still didn't give me the same reading experience that I had with Beach Read, but it does really cover nice exploration of different aspects of relationships, being that family, love life, and personal, and I really did appreciate that aspect, so I still really enjoyed book lovers a lot more than people we meet on vacation. Okay, now after going through each of the books, I have come to the conclusion that I like and not love Emily Henry's books and that's not a bad thing. I do think after reading Beach Read and with the other books following Beach Read that Emily Henry was trying to emulate the same tone and pacing that she had in Beach Read in her newer releases and it worked in some aspects and it didn't in others. The romances themselves are really well thought out with the different conflicts in each person's lives in each book, but some side plot lines could have been done without and it wouldn't have been missed personally. Despite the negative thoughts that I had in each book section, I still really like Emily Henry's books and I do have to declare that Emily Henry is worth the read and I will continue reading her books in the future. I'm going to be concluding this video here and I did really have a lot of fun making this video and this type of video is really nice to see where I stand with an author or book series at that time that I'm making that video. So thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and ring that notification bell to not miss any future uploads from me. I'll see y'all soon.